guys, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the French Pharmacy A313 Pomade you guys have asked me to review. This is a vitamin A pomade, which sounds really promising, and I believe it's pretty affordable. I think you can definitely get it on Amazon, and I know for those of you in Europe, I think it's widely available to you as well. And the reason this is an exciting ingredient, and I think you all are interested in it, is that we know that vitamin A derivatives, topical vitamin A applied to the skin can have all, all of these amazing anti-aging benefits for the skin. Uh, vitamin A derivatives can do things like improve collagen synthesis, strengthen the deeper layers of our skin, ultimately improving the look of wrinkles and fine lines. They also can help with discoloration and improving hyperpigmentation. And for people with acne, they can help in controlling how some of the epidermis turns over and kind of reduce that abnormal proliferation that leads to uh, plugging up of the pores and closed comedones that ultimately lead to acne. So there are so many benefits to topical vitamin A out there that, you know, I've gone into the science behind it in several other videos, so I won't belabor it in today's video. However, not all vitamin A derivatives in topical products are created equal. At the top of the food chain, when it comes to vitamin A derivatives, you have retinoic acid and third generation retin retinoids. Retinoic acid is what is in prescription tretinoin. Prescription tretinoin, you can't get tretinoin over the counter, by the way. You can only get it here in the States at least, with a prescription. And no, this A313 cream is not tretinoin. I get questions about that, no, they're not the same thing. Uh, tretinoin is retinoic acid. It is the most well studied for not only an anti-aging benefit, but also for acne control. It's just one of the oldest ones that we, we've had, and it's one we've been using for the longest, I would say. Um, in addition to retinoic acid, you also have your third generation retinoids. Technically, they are not retinoic acid, but they are biologically active. They get into the cell, they bind to the appropriate receptors, and they do their thing. And there's a lot of data for these ingredients in terms of anti-aging benefit. Haven't been around as long as tretinoin, but these these other third generation retinoids, are we do have good data to show that there are anti-aging benefits with using them. And by third generation retinoids, I mean things like adapalene, which you can buy actually over the counter. So for all intents and purposes, the most robust anti-aging vitamin A derivative that you can buy in the store without a prescription is going to be adapalene, which is sold by the brand as the brand name Differin or La Roche-Posay has an adapalene gel I've reviewed for you guys. And the different one and the La Roche-Posay one, they're identical. So get, get whichever one you want. But those are gonna be the most robust vitamin A derivatives that you buy in the store. Moving down the ladder uh, to the next in line is gonna be retinaldehyde. Retinaldehyde is what is in Avenz Retrin AL that I reviewed for you guys a while back. This product um, has to, the, the vitamin A derivative in this is retinaldehyde. It has to be oxidized to retinoic acid. So that's something that your skin has to do to this ingredient in order to get it to a state where it will actually do anything. And that's not possible and it does work and we have really good data to show that it does help and it is helpful. It's less irritating than retinoic acid so people tolerate it better, which is why you'll find it over the counter. It's just easier for people to keep up with. And we do have good data to show that retinaldehyde, while even though it has to go through this additional step, it can still be helpful, modestly helpful. And I'll get into that in a moment. So that, that's next in line. Then uh, the moving down the ladder, you have retinol, R-E-T-I-N-O-L. <clears throat> retinol is what is in the CeraVe Resurfacing Retinol Serum. CeraVe also has a, another retinol serum that I've reviewed for you guys that comes in a purple container, but it's the same retinol. Retinol, we also have good evidence that it can exert an anti-aging benefit. Uh, not as robust as retinaldehyde and definitely not as robust as retinoic acid, but far less irritating than either of those ingredients. Um, it does suffer the limitation in that it's not as stable, so you it degrades and it has to be oxidized first to retinaldehyde, which then has to be oxidized to retinoic acid. So a lot more steps in the, in the process to getting it to, to be something that will work, 
But we do have good evidence that retinols can exert some improvement in the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines. We have data going back to the 90s showing that. So retinol, you know, less effective than retinaldehyde, but good evidence to support its use for anti-aging. All right, then moving down the ladder, we have retin retinol esters. These include things like retinol propionate, and that is what is in A313 pomade, a mixture of different retinol esters. Retinol esters have to first be hydrolyzed to retinol by your skin, which then has to be oxidized to retinaldehyde, which then has to be oxidized to retinoic acid in order to do anything for you. So are they effective? Well, there was actually a study done by Green et al. looking at a 48 week study examining the efficacy of one of these retinol esters, retinol propionate, which is in the A313 pomade. Uh, this was a double blind placebo controlled trial of 80 participants. They looked at application of this retinol ester, not only on the face, but also on the forearm and hands. Those are other areas of the body people wanna be anti-aging. You know, you've got sunspots there, wrinkles, sagging, etc. They looked at these different body surfaces, application of the retinol propionate in comparison to a placebo cream that did not have retinol propionate. And they really looked in depth at a lot of different measures. They reviewed clinical, clinical data, I mean, actually looking at images of the participants. And they also took skin biopsies, measuring things like collagen and skin thickness, some of those biologic endpoints that we know vitamin A derivatives do. And they also looked at some profilometric patterns, parameters in terms of anti-aging, things like wrinkle depth, a uh, degree of hyperpigmentation, et cetera. Um, and so at the end of the study, this was 48 weeks, they showed minimal improvement with retinal propionate. And in fact, they showed that there was no statistical difference between retinal ester, retinal propionate, and just the plain placebo cream. Uh, so in other words, not very compelling for the use of retinal esters. Now, retinal esters, like all kind of precursor vitamin A compounds that ultimately end up, hopefully, the, the goal is to end up like retinoic acid, biologically active. These compounds, they all, they're, they're all susceptible to degradation. So the further down the ladder they are, the bigger the, bigger the crapshoot. <laughs> in terms of efficacy. And retinyl propionate is the one that was examined in this study and it is also in the A313 pomade. That really, I mean, we don't have any, the data suggests that just doesn't work for anti-aging purposes. There are some newer retinyl um, esters coming out in the cosmeceutical market that seem promising for being better, but the studies are really small at this point. For example, there is a newer one, retinol aspart aspartamate and retinol retino retinoate. And they're emerging as being promising. We have some small studies showing some modest improvements with those, but those aren't in the A313 pomade. Now, over-the-counter vitamin A derivatives are attractive to consumers who are just looking for maybe some improvement in wrinkles and fine lines and seeking an anti-aging benefit, but they don't wanna to have to cope with either relying on getting a prescription, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they're not able to get in for follow-up, you know, maybe that, that's just not working out. That's not uncommon. So they turn to over-the-counter vitamin A derivatives because they want some of these anti-aging benefits. They don't have a true skin disease necessarily, like acne, uh, that, you know, would get them into the dermatologist and require follow-up more frequently. Uh, they don't have a true skin disease, but they do have skin aging concerns that they want to improve upon cosmetic things they want to achieve. So that's, you know, that's when consumers turn to over-the-counter vitamin A derivatives. Another benefit of over-the-counter vitamin A derivatives, over the prescription stuff, the stuff that's really robust, is that it, they tend to be, they're much less irritating. Uh, an issue with uh, both third generation retinoids like adapalene as well as retinoic acid, prescription tretinoin, is that they can be pretty irritating and some people just don't, aren't gonna tolerate that irritation and it gets it's a roadblock for them to comply with those stronger, more biologically active vitamin A derivatives. So a lot of the over-the-counter stuff is gonna be easier to tolerate. It's not as, it's not as hardy, but it can still work 
and it can work and be less irritating. So that's that's actually a good thing, especially you know when you're pursuing something like improving the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines and hyperpigmentation. If, a, if an ingredient is too irritating for you, that's actually something that can cause your hyperpigmentation to get worse, just that increased irritation on the skin. So it makes sense actually for cosmetic benefit to try and seek something that is gonna be easier for you to tolerate and comply with. And that's where consumers turn to these over-the-counter vitamin A derivatives. But if we think about the ladder of, 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 uh, of compounds, if you will, vitamin A compounds out there, I already mentioned that here in the States at least, the most effective, most bioactive, robust vitamin A compound that you can buy is gonna be adapalene that you can buy in the store. Um, and I know in other countries you guys don't have this, but uh, here in the States, that's probably the one that has the most data for showing not only anti-aging benefit, but that we know is biologically active and works. It can, it can be a little irritating, but of all of the big gun vitamin A derivatives, it's the least irritating. So, but moving down the ladder, I mean, if you wanna invest in a vitamin A compound that has a lot of data to support its use, I would say go with one that has retinaldehyde in it over, over some of these other vitamin A derivatives that we talked about. And I've reviewed the Aven Retrin AL. This isn't cheap, but it is effective and it does work. And I know you can get it here in the States and I know in Europe you can get a variety of other, I believe Aven there also makes a retinaldehyde cream serum perhaps. Uh, and then there are a few other brands as well. I'm not as familiar, you guys, with all the cosmeceuticals in everyone's countries, but I do believe that the European market, at least with the event, there are there are some retinal, retinaldehyde serums and moisturizing products that you could try and would be probably your best bet for a strong evidence-based vitamin A derivative. What, are the, what is the evidence? So there's a 44 week study that actually looked at uh, retinaldehyde at 0.05% and showed that it was as effective as 0.05% tretinoin or retinoic acid uh, for improving some of the visible signs of photo aging like wrinkles and fine lines. That's a, that's a decent length of, of time, that, that particular study, uh, really compelling. So I would say that the evidence is strongest for retinaldehyde moving down the ladder. Um, and then next in line, you know, you have your retinols. Retinol, R-E-T-I-N-O-L. Like what's in the CeraVe Skin Renewing, um, Skin Resurfacing Retinol Serum and their Skin Renewing Serum. They have a couple of different ones. Uh, if you look at the ingredients, you'll just see the word retinol, and that's, you know, that's what the ingredient is. Has to be oxidized to retinaldehyde first. Um, basically has to turn into this. Uh, which then has to turn into tretinoin in your skin. So a little bit more work, but doesn't mean it can't work. Probably the strongest evidence out there, uh, dating back from the 90s, are studies looking at retinols showing that retinol at 0.25% uh, some of the strongest evidence for, uh, with ongoing use, exerting an anti-aging benefit. Um, the issue though, uh, the caveat with that is that a lot of times as a consumer, you're not going to be privy to the percentage strength of the retinol in the product and that can be really hard. You might have to contact the manufacturer and there's a very good chance they're not going to tell you, which I find incredibly frustrating. It makes it very difficult for the consumer to pick one that is going to be the most evidence-based, most effective. Um, you know, I have a lot of confidence in CeraVe. They're owned by L'Oreal, which I know makes a lot of you cringe out there, but L'Oreal does have fantastic R&D. And I do have a lot of confidence in the retinol in, in the CeraVe product. I've used it myself on my hands. And, you know, I mean, just my personal anecdotal evidence, I found that it worked. And I have a lot of patients who use it um, for anti-aging benefit and, and love it and, you know, don't have any issues with it. So I think it's a great product for a retinol. It does have the limitations that it's not going to be as robust as, as, uh, as adapalene or tretinoin, but definitely something that people find they can keep up with and it's not as irritating as many of the other vitamin A compounds. But then at the very bottom of that, you have the retinol esters, which, you know, with this A313 product, which I really haven't talked that much about, even though that's what this video is about, there's there's very poor, the, the evidence is just not there for, for retinal esters in terms of an anti-aging benefit. We have some newer ones coming down the pipeline, which are not included in the A313 pomade, um, but that, that may be, they may, they may end up working out, but 
they're not in this product and th this product you know it's got retinal esters that have not been shown to to do anti-aging kind of benefits or to be helpful for wrinkles so at the end of the day the a313 pomade if we just look at it overall it's it's pretty inexpensive it doesn't have any garbage ingredients in it as far as fragrance um, or methyl isothiazinolones so you know it, it may be a nice moisturizer I just don't have much confidence that the vitamin A ingredients in that product are going to do anything for your skin over just using a plain moisturizer alone um, but it's pretty affordable so you know it's like a, whatever uh, you know if you're using it I, I get it you know it's compelling to want to use a vitamin A compound but I just I make this video to point out that the evidence is not quite there for those those retinal esters over over some of the other vitamin A compounds out there. So for me personally, you know, I tell people here in the states just go with the dappling. It's pretty cheap, 14 bucks, and most biologically active, and has a lot of evidence for improving wrinkles and fine lines. But if you find a dappling too irritating, well, you, you know, you've got retinaldehyde, good evidence for that. Although, honestly, retinaldehyde can be pretty expensive in the cosmeceutical products. So I'll also guide them towards retinols and be like, look, they're not as, they're not as robust. You may have to use them for a longer period of time to see results, but they can be effective for sure. So yeah, kind of to summarize, you know, the A313 pomade, the vitamin A ingredients in the A313 pomade would have to be at first hydrolyzed to the active ingredient in this product which then has to be oxidized to the active ingredient in this product, which then has to be oxidized to do what the active ingredient in these products do. Here, let me hold them up so you can actually see. Uh, the adapalene in, in La Roche-Posay and Differin, as well as what the Am I back in the screen? As well as what um, prescription Tretinoin would do. Um, so yeah, you know, if you want something over the counter that's robust, uh, I would say Adapalene here in the States, Differin or the La Roche-Posay one is probably the most ro biologically active. And then moving down the tier is gonna be retinaldehyde. Retinaldehyde, you know, really can work. We've got a good, you know, good fairly compelling data showing that it is as effective as 0.05 tretinoin. So I would go with that if you really want the anti-aging benefits. If that's what you're seeking, I would go with either of those two ingredients. Um, and you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't be you wouldn't be wasting your time on retinol either. A uh, little bit more work that it has to do in comparison to the others, but it wouldn't be a complete waste of time. I do think that the retinol esters are a waste of time. Uh, so I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about those. So that being said, you know, when you buy a vitamin, a, a, a product out there, we'll just say vitamin A or some kind of vague terminology, retinol, and it's on you as a consumer to read the ingredients. If you don't see the word retinol listed in the ingredients, well then it's probably got, uh, or if you don't see retinol or retinaldehyde or adapalene, it's probably got retinol esters, and uh, they're just not as as effective. So yeah, that's hopefully helpful to you guys in navigating the bazillion dollar industry of retinol serums because there are thousands of retinol creams and products out there. So I hope that little ladder helps you in kind of navigating them. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.